Okay, welcome back. Uh, we will go on now with a, a set of bioacoustical uh, presentations. And we start off with uh, Baudouin Ode, who will uh, tell us everything about grasshopper sounds on Xenocanto. You need this one? Hi everyone. Um, where's the... Oh dear. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, in many of your presentations I've seen nice pictures of grasshoppers, but my computer screen is usually filled with these types of graphs and I'm listening to uh, grasshopper sounds. So, um, Xenocanto. I don't know if you know it, but I'll tell a bit about it. Uh, tell a bit about uh, grasshopper songs within Xenocanto and uh, the technical issues that we are solving uh, during this process and um, also, well, the importance of uh, maybe using Xenocanto uh, also in the process of conservation of grasshoppers. So first, uh, Xenocanto, it's built for bird songs and I don't know if there's any birders in, in the room, but <laughs> they will use it, <laughs> yes, <laughs> to uh, hear recordings uh, or maybe add recordings uh, to the database. Um, so it's a really a big database. Um, and, um, well, um, it, the file format is MP3 at this moment. Uh, sharing will be under Creative Commons, so uh, people can use usually these files also for other purposes. Um, and um, one important thing also, it's, uh, it has uh, the recordings have fixed URLs, so those can be uh, reused or they can be used as, re ref as a reference <coughs> uh, in publications, etc. Um, so there's sonograms for birds, that's usually the case to show uh, the, sound, the song. And uh, of course, when there are um, data, uh, georeference data, there will be, they will also be on the map. Um, there's a lot of, in bird, birding people, of, of course, a lot of interaction um, and uh, between the experts, um, they are, well, more or less uh, making sure the data, data are okay. <clears throat> and there's also some mystery recordings. Of course, this is worldwide, so uh, this also includes the tropics, and there may, may be many songs uh, that are unheard <coughs> by many people. So questions get solved in 50% of the cases, so that's also very good. And a few years ago, uh, also, there was a routine involved to uh, upload the sound recordings to GBIF. And it's now the biggest database uh, with reference to sound recordings in GBIF. So that's also very good. Um, the website shows a lot of things like, uh, well, a map with all the, uh, where all the data are. Um, so this is only relating to uh, birds so far. Um, <clears throat> well, there's a lot of uh, um, uh, ideas, in the number of recordings, the number of recordists um, involved, and the number of records already uploaded to GBIF. So the statistics look, at least for birds, very good. <clears throat> so how about grasshopper song within this system? We have started the test in 2020, uh, so that's why I already planned to have this talk about the orthoptera species. They are now <coughs> under the orthoptery formers because many of these uh, uh, taxonomic groups within birds are f uh, like uh, formers. Per, per, I don't know the, uh, the birds. Uh, um, uh, names of uh, the other orders, but um, we tested uh, 30 species just to see if it works, and um, within uh, one year already uh, 60 
other people added their grasshopper recordings to the uh, Xenocanto database. And uh, now we have uh, 141 recordings there within this uh, fake family. <laughs> um, so you can see uh, the, 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 the graphic representation. So um, it's based on an MP3 format. So the frequencies are up to 15 kilohertz or something and not higher. And um, so this is one recording of Tedigonia and you see the locality as well um, on the map. Um, okay. Um, so um, first a bit about these fixed URLs because uh, they are really handy also for publications. So, <clears throat> for instance, the British Insects book um, in uh, this uh, book there are Q QR codes and you can use them. I will try this, but I'm not sure if I will be able to work this out. I have a microphone. <laughs> I think. Okay, so so it says xenocanto.org. Here, there it is. Yes. So the field cricket QR code, and it works. So you don't need to add a, a compact disc or whatever or a website uh, away from this book. You have uh, the recordings already in the book. <coughs> This will also be used in uh, <coughs> the field guide of the, of the uh, British, British Isles. Um, it should look a bit like this. This is just uh, the first uh, draft of the, of the uh, cover of this book. Uh, it's expected now, it's a bit, a bit delayed, uh, expected next year. Uh, but also, I said, ref for referencing in scientific publications, uh, these URLs are unique, so you can use them. Okay, some technical issues. So I already said um, it's built for bird songs. So the World Bird Database, uh, Taxonomic Database is, is there. Um, um, we have uh, uh, applied, of course, the, uh, the Orthoptera Species File Taxonomy to uh, make available all the grasshopper uh, groups. So you see only a small, small part of the list of uh, all the families there. Um, the MP3 format, um, it will be WAF format and only in all uh, possible resolutions. So uh, even uh, people uh, using bed detectors uh, with really high frequencies uh, can upload their recordings and they will be stored and used and shown. The sonograms, um, of course, will also include the higher frequencies. Um, this one, it's uh, the species we had in the, the mystery species we had in the pop quiz um, uh, yesterday. And it has not only frequencies in the lower range, the audible, more or less audible range, but it also has really high uh, ultrasonic uh, frequencies. Um, oscillograms are not available right now, but they will, so that's good. And also a sonogram because, of course, for grasshoppers it's also interesting to see where uh, where are the frequencies and not just how is the pattern of a song. And um, of course there was a data set of metadata for uh, bird songs, but uh, this had to be altered, <coughs> altered and amended to have also uh, the things that we need for grasshopper recordings available, like is it a studio recording or is, is it a field recording temperature, uh, is it calling song, courtship song, etc. So there's many, uh, well, uh, good extra metadata available for the orthoptera, it, where they will be available. Um, so um, I think if we 
start using this. We, we may raise a lot of sound recorded discs and sound recorders. I think um, the bird people and the bat people, they will join us because they already are doing this a bit. And I think this really has a, well, a great opportunity to have some cross fertilization and uh, do some joint uh, work on grasshoppers. Maybe some grasshopper people will even start doing bats um, with the, the bat detectors that are available now. Um, and if more sound recordings are freely available, also there's a possibility to, uh, well, engage more people in grasshopper, grasshopper song, get more observations, and, um, well, we've seen the importance of song and, well, if we spread this uh, information more widely, it may also be more easy to find the, the, the more cryptic species um, and, uh, based on the song. Okay, so, well, my main message from this is please add your recordings as far as you are recording. Um, um, you can add single recordings, um, you can use a batch upload uh, of recordings. I will do this, I think, in a few months um, with the first batch of about 3,000 recordings of about 300 mainly European species. So uh, there will be a lot already uh, at the start of uh, Xenoxanto. Um, but of course, you can also start listening for the species you might be interested in. Um, help people with mystery songs uh, that are, will become available, I suppose. <laughs> um, and, well, use recordings for your researches and publications. And maybe it's also interesting, there's several institutions that have collections of sound recordings. And, well, they are stored away sometimes really deeply. <laughs> so uh, it might also be interesting to, to find projects there to uh, also get these uh, collections of sound recordings available in uh, Xenocanto. The same happened with the bird recordings, so I, I hope this will uh, work. Um, we need to be a little bit patient because, uh, well, I supposedly this summer uh, we will be uh, online with a new system. Uh, I will keep you informed, of course, about this. Um, and yes, uh, my final mes message is let's make internet more rich in grasshopper songs. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, what I understood was that uh, Xenocanto will use the grasshopper experiences to uh, make the database available for all nature sounds, so that will be interesting maybe also for cicadas and uh, frogs. Yes, yes this, is, this is a first step, and um, so the second step, they need some money to do this, so the second step also financed is uh, making it possible for uh, the bats. But I think amphibians and uh, cicadas, heteroptera, uh, yes, there's many more families uh, that would be really interesting to uh, disclose. Yes. Any questions? Ah. <clears throat> Hi, Axel Hochkirch here. <laughs> um, there are already some very good uh, programs available now for automatic image recognition and also sound recognition for at least birds. Uh, I don't know which is there a central database and how these databases are, or initiatives are connected and I also thought may, there are so many songs already uploaded in iNaturalist or observation.org. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder how this how these systems can speak to each other. And, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, okay, those are two questions, I think. Um, I get a lot of questions because I have quite a big database of sound recordings uh, for, from people who th think of making uh, automatic recognition uh, 
possible, so they want to use my recordings and, well, I, I think I now say, <clears throat> because of course I've helped some people, including Dan Stowell, who will be talking after me, um, but um, uh, I think I now say um, wait for Xenocanto because there will be a lot, at least my recordings will be there, <laughs> so you can use them all. Um, <clears throat> the second part of your question is more about, um, of course, these systems are there and they are different. I think, um, well, GBIF would be the final uh, way of uh, disclosing all these data. So um, the orthopter data, especially, uh, well, the ones with uh, georeferencing data, will, of course, be also uploaded in batches to GBIF. So they will be there. Um, and iNaturalist, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. iNaturalist is also going to uh, GBIF, I think. Um, I, I'm not aware if the sound recordings will. OK, so there's another set that's available through GBIF. So, well, there will be at least many more possibilities to uh, Gather, gather data uh, with sound recordings. One online question? Yeah. Yeah, that's a question from uh, Howan Henri. It's not directly related to Xenocanto, but to song recordings. He yeah. wants to, to know if there is a better idea for recording flight sounds of Udipudine. Ah. Uh, that's tricky, yes. Uh, Usually you do like this with your microphone, following the insect, but uh, I don't know a better way. It would be really nice to find a way to have a microphone on the back of the insect and then record it, but it's not there yet. Okay, thank you, by the way. Thank you.